Well, I'm glad you were able to be here this morning. And uh, some said last week you don't need this microphone, but uh, I guess I've got into a habit of using a microphone. And uh, so you got it, I guess you use it. And anyway, uh, I would like to uh, minister to you this morning out of the book of Daniel. If you got your Bible, I want you to turn to the fourth chapter of Daniel. And I'm going to read a little bit about Nebuchadnezzar and the uh, visitation that he had from God, him being the king of Babylon. And uh, it says in verse 28, All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. And the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Sound like he was bragging, wasn't he? Taking the credit to himself. All the blessings that God gives, whether it be uh, to a, a saint or a sinner, all of it comes from God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. So some gifts that come from God aren't exactly perfect. Sometimes because uh, men don't handle them properly, they don't use them properly. You know, if, if every rich man would use his wealth properly, you know, we would have plenty of money in the churches to uh, uh, reach every uh, missionary work that is possible. We could support every missionary work possible. We could uh, we could turn this world upside down. But you know, God doesn't need the riches of men. God can produce it. You know, it's all His anyway. Come on. You know, if He chooses to, He could He could take uh, everything away from a rich man and give it to a poor man. And uh, it's all God's anyway. And we should always remember that. But Belshazzar, or I'm sorry, Nebuchadnezzar here, he read, uh, he read it differently. You know, when he was glorifying his own self, all that he had done and accomplished. And it'd be good for you to read like the, the first four or five chapters of, of Daniel, get a, a better background of what, he, what I'm talking about here. And in verse 31, it says, While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as an oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. How about that? Politicians, are you listening? He giveth it to whomsoever he will. I'll just let that, I'll just let you think about that for a minute. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird claws. Now in the Dake Bible, uh, this says that this was a mental disease that came upon Nebuchadnezzar. You ever see anyone lose their mind? <laughs> you know, that person is a changed person. Uh, they're not the same. Here it was so bad for Nebuchadnezzar, that, uh, and it is a rare disease that he got, but all of a sudden it was upon him. It is called lycan, lycanthropy, if I'm pronouncing it right. And it was from the Greek word leukos, meaning, get this now, wolf and anthropos, man. Because the person images himself to be a wolf, a bear, or other some, some other wild animal. I kind of think that uh, describes uh, some of these uh, Hollywood fantasy movies like they've made about a werewolf, you know. Hello? A man becomes a werewolf because of a disease that he has because he was bitten by another werewolf. 
Anyway, and it was a curse, uh, according to some of the movies, it was a curse that was put upon him. And so when God uh, told him, he said, now you bragged for the last time. You need to learn a lesson here. You need to learn that I'm the one that determines who's going to rule and who's not going to rule. And so this was a, a dream that he'd had, been warned about. Daniel had interpreted the dream before, and it took about a year for it to come to pass. But it came upon him. And he brought it upon himself when he, he stepped out uh, on the balcony and, and began to look over his kingdom. And it says, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon and said to himself and to others, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? I would advise every ruler on earth, humble yourself before God, because it is God that rules in the affairs of men. And I'm going to prove it to you today. And so this is what happened. He became like a, a wolf or a wild animal, and he went out and he had to eat grass in the fields because he was so mad. His mind was, was so bad. He thought he was a wild animal. And he ate grass for seven years. The dew uh, came upon him at night. Uh, and uh, he, had no, he didn't have any shelter other than uh, the nature, the nature itself that gave him any shelter. And like a wolf, you know, they find shelter. Uh, and, you know, God can bring us down. He can bring any man down. Amen, brother? God can bring any man down that he has exalted before because it's God that puts him in place. God controls the affairs of men. Come on. You know, a lot of world leaders, they think they're in control. No, they're not. Because God's word is going to come to pass and anybody that gets in the way that, that tries to hinder or keep God's word from coming to pass, watch out because God's going to take them out. Hello. God's going to remove them uh, from their uh, authority and from their reign. And this was a lesson that Nebuchadnezzar needed to learn. And it says, at the end of the days, in verse 34, in other words, at the end of seven years, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Woo, hallelujah. He finally recognized who was really in control. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? What are you doing, God? Nobody can stand against God and say, No, no, God, you're not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it my way. No, you're not. You might think that you're in control, but God has you on a leash. And if you go too far, He can pull back that leash, like that little dog I've got. You know, He wants to run away from me all the time. And I, I got Him on a leash, you know. I pulled Him back. No, no, no. We're not going that way. We're going this way. He wants to go there. He wants to go there. He's got, he got so much energy. He, he just wants to pull me everywhere. He's he pretty strong for a little bitty dog too. Uh, but you know, God has a leash on every everyone in this world, especially those who rule and reign over kingdoms and nations and, and those who think they are in power and have such great power and, and great, such great authority, they can snap their finger and things can happen, you know, maybe in their kingdom. But when God says, wait a minute, Wait a minute, we're not going to do it that way. I'm not going to allow it to happen because it will corrupt my word. My word will not come to pass if you do such a thing. And I'm not going to allow you to do it. I'm going to hold you back. And if you get in my way, I'll remove you. And that's what God did to Nebuchadnezzar here. He had a great kingdom. A kingdom of Babylon that ruled many, many parts of the world. He was a great ruler. And he had to learn his lesson. He'd seen it before with uh, uh, the three Hebrew children that he cast into the burning fiery furnace. 
And uh, because they didn't fall down at a certain time of when the music sounded, they didn't fall down to his 90-foot golden image that he had erected. When, I, when the sound of the trumpets and all these things, and he said, when you hear the sound, then bow yourself down in obedience to me in my image. That's what a man will think. That's what a, a leader thinks. People have to bow down to them. They have to listen to them and do what they want. Well, that's, that's not the way God rules. Hello? And God said to him, uh, and, he, and he spoke to him, and he showed him something when he threw the three Hebrew children in the burning fiery furnace because they refused to bow. Hello? It's an example of the people of God. We must refuse to bow. We're not going to give in. We're going to stand our ground. Hello? We have God back in us. Hello? I'm not afraid to tell you what God said in His Word because it's His Word, it's not my Word. I'm just the messenger. Hello? I'm just the messenger. And Daniel was just the messenger. He, he interpreted the dream for him. And this is what came to pass. And after seven years of crawling through the grass and eating grass and, and, and acting like a, a, a wolf, becoming like a werewolf, lost his mind because he bragged on what he had done. Hello? But God is in control. At the end of these days, he said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, I lifted up my eyes. You know, if people would just lift up their eyes into heaven, you know, some people are so, so self-centered and everything, they can't see any further than their nose. Hello? They, they can't see any further than, the, than themselves. They constantly have to look at themselves in the mirror or see what they have done. Look at, look at what they've accomplished and everything. Let me tell you something. One of these days you're going to leave this world and it's all going to be left behind because you can't take it with you. None of this, these things uh, will pass on into the next life. Only what good we've laid up in heaven. Only what treasures we've laid up because of our faithfulness and our giving unto God and God's work. Did you know in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, that it talks about when a man pays tithes, he pays it in heaven? Seventh chapter of, of Hebrews. Look it up yourself. And when you pay tithes down here, you pay it in heaven. Let me tell you something. It works the opposite way too. When you rob God of your tithes, you're robbing Him. You're robbing uh, of the blessings that God's got stored up for you. You think a robber's going to enter into heaven? Hello? My old pastor used to say, there ain't no robbers in heaven. You can't get up that way if you keep robbing God. Hello? So, it's pretty serious. It, the Bible says the, the, the tithe is holy unto the Lord. Amen. Don't belong to you. It belongs to God. Hello? Nice commercial there. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He doeth according to his will in the army of heaven among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time, my reason returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my Lord sought unto me. And I was established in my kingdom. And excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and ex extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. Come on now. There's a lot of people walking in pride. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to accomplish this. We've got a lot of a proud people up there in Washington, D.C. They think that they're going to do uh, things uh, uh, because of, uh, of their authority or, or because of the power that, that they've, they're in, invested in them in, in a higher seat or uh, a seat of Congress or something like this. Let me tell you something. You ain't going to do anything that God don't want you to do. You ain't going to do anything uh, that, that God don't approve of. Hello? That if it's going to be against God's word, God's going to stop you. Hello, you ain't, you ain't uh, uh, running against man, you're running against God. How about that? Come on, Nebuchadnezzar learned it the hard way. And so he, he said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, I praise and extol and honor the King of Heaven. His works, he said, are truth. Hello, you know, only His works are truth. We, do, we, we see a lot of things being done on this world, on this world, world, world and earth together. <laughs> uh, on this world, 
<laughs> Amen. Come on, don't laugh at me. Uh, anyway, sometimes my uh, tongue gets tangled or tang gets tumbled. I don't know what it, which one it is. But, uh, you know, uh, God is in control. I just wanted to remind you of that today. God is in control. You think you're in control of your life? You think you can do the things that you want to do in any time you want to do them? You think you can continue uh, uh, sinning the way you're sinning, living the way you're living when you know that it's wrong? Hello? When you know that that, that sin is going to take you to the pits of hell and you refuse to repent of it, you refuse to listen to what God said in His Word, and you're going to do it your way. Hello? Listen, you ain't going to do it your way and end up in heaven. You're going to do it God's way and you're going to be obedient to Him because if you're not obedient to Him, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. I don't care what some other uh, church or denomination or preacher or whoever they are, how many times they pat you on the back, how many times they dunk you under the water and baptize you. Uh, they could baptize you in every uh, creek in the, in, the, in the country until every tadpole knows you by name. My old preacher used to say that. That ain't going to save you. Until you submit yourself to God completely. Until you totally surrender to God and give yourself to Him completely. Nebuchadnezzar finally reached that point where he'd give himself completely to God. He'd give all the glory, all the honor to God. He fell a long ways. He was on top and he fell all the way to the bottom. He was an animal for seven years. Come on. Losing his mind that way done him good. Come on. Maybe we need to lose our mind and let God be God. Come on. We've got so many people trying to do it their way. And they're so stubborn and rebellion. You know, God hates stubbornness. He hates rebellion. He can't work with you. God can't use a man that's stubborn and rebellious. God can't use a stingy man. God can't use a doubtful man. A fearful man. Come on, God can't use you if you're fearful. If you're unbelieving. God can't use you. But God wants to change you. God wants to change your life. He wants to make a useful person out of you. Hello. So I say today, stop doing it your way. Let God do it His way. God's already designed the best way there is. He's, he said that He was the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come into the Father, He said, except He come through me. You can't get to heaven on your own. You can give everything you own. It won't help you until you give your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Until you surrender completely and totally to God, you're not getting anywhere. You're just going to stumble along. You're just going to continue to do the things you're doing. You're not going to get victory over these things. They're going to drag you down. They're going to drag your health down. I've heard people brag to me and say, well, I can quit smoking any time I want to. I can quit drinking any time I want to. I can come to God any time I want to. You know, uh, when I get older, I'll, I'll do that. I'll have it. I'll, I'll give up all these things. Right now, I'm having fun. Listen, you ain't in control. You might think you are. But God's got your number. And God, He can call your number at any time. Are you ready to meet God? Are you ready to surrender to God? Are you ready to give up completely and totally and say, God, without you, I'm nothing. That's what Nebuchadnezzar finally realized. Without you, I'm nothing. But with you, I can go with God. If you go with God, you can do the things that He'll bless you with. He'll, he'll make something of you. Amen. And you'll be able to give glory to God. But you can't give glory to God if you're living in sin. Hello. You can't give glory to God if you keep rebelling against His Word. Come on now. Some of you know better. Some of you that have listened to me, you know better. You know what you should be doing. And that's the worst of it. The Bible says, He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Don't you point your finger at the old sinner out there that don't know any better. 
But some of you that have been in church and you you backslid on God and you you're out there trying to do it your way, you're 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 totally wrong. You're going to end up in the ditch face down and without God. If you don't surrender to God right now, give your complete surrender to Him and say, Lord, here I am. I come to you. I can't do it myself. That's what brought me back to God. Uh, when I came back from Vietnam, I learned how to drink, and that's all I seemed to want to do. I become almost an alcoholic, and, and I just couldn't give it up. It had such a control on me. And one day I went to church, not for the right reasons. I went looking for a girl that I knew I was going to ask her out after church. Well, I didn't see her there that night. But I tell you what, what I did see. I tell you what I did hear. I heard the voice of God and He said, this is the last time I'm going to deal with you. And boy, that shook me up. You say, how you know it was God? Let me tell you something. When God speaks to you, you will know it. It shook me up. My knees began to knock together. And I gripped a hold of the back, of, the back of that seat in front of me and I, and I said, I'm not going up to that altar. I'm not going up to that altar. I tried it and it don't work. I was preaching before I went to Vietnam. Amen. I was full of the Holy Ghost. I'd been preaching since I was 12. I knew better. That's the whole problem that I had. I knew better. God said to me, if you can't do it, let me do it. Because I said, Lord, I can't do it. And he said, let me do it. Let me take it away from you. And when I raised my hands, and the preacher come and prayed for me. He, he said, you haven't been completely delivered yet. And he prayed the prayer of deliverance and set me free. And from then and that day forward, I've not touched one drop of alcohol. Come on. You can go to all the Alcoholic Anonymous things that you can find. You could join every club. You could join the 12-step club. It's not going to help you until you surrender to God. You could be on all the drugs and everything, but it's not going to help you until you surrender to God completely. He can do it. He can take it from you. Amen? Try it God's way. God bless you today. I'm going to pray a prayer for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you, and I ask you to, that this message will reach each and every one, Lord, that may be bound who may be bound in sin or sickness or, or disease, God, that you would reach out to them and they would reach out to you. They would surrender their heart and life to you and come to you as they are and let you deliver them. Let you change their heart and life as they surrender and give themselves to you. We ask it in Jesus' name and we thank you for those that will do so today. Amen. Write me let me know. Uh, what God has done in your life. Post Office Box 3508. And that's Paducah, Kentucky 42001 or 42002. Paducah, Kentucky. Post Office Box 3508. Let me know that you've been listening. Let me know what God has done in your life. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening today.